What's up guys, thanks for joining me for the first tutorial. Today we are going to be creating our first program. It's going to be a Hello World program. It's going to print Hello World to the screen. It's going to be very, very simple. So go ahead and open up whichever IDE you used. Go down to main.cpp, open that up, and then delete any code that's there. We're going to start completely fresh. So the first thing we need to do is create our main function. This is where our program is going to begin. So we're going to type int main and then we need some parentheses right here. If you don't have these parentheses, it doesn't know you're referring to a function, so then we won't be able to actually begin the program here. Then on the next line, you're going to type left curly brace, right curly brace, okay? All of the code that you want the main function to run goes inside this, okay? So whenever we do our output statement, it's going to be right in here. But before we can do that, we need to get some tools, right? We need to include something in our project that will let us print things out. We can't always have everything included in our project at once because the C++ library is super, super big, okay? And it would just be kind of a waste to always have all of that stuff in our project when we don't actually need it. So we need to tell it specifically what we need. And the first thing we need is an output stream. That's going to let us print things to the screen. So the way you get that is you type at the top, pound include, okay? This is a preprocessor directive. It tells C++ we want to include some code in our project. Then we're going to type left angle brace io stream okay this stands for input output stream okay and this is going to let us print things out to the screen and in another tutorial it'll also let us get things from the user so you can input stuff now we need one more thing we need to tell c++ that we're going to use the standard library now io stream is part of the standard library the output stream is part of it the standard library is basically a big collection of a bunch of stuff that helps us program better, right? We don't want to have to go down in the nitty gritty and write all this, you know, file output stuff all by ourselves. We want to have some stuff that's already there that makes it easy, and that's what the standard library is. So in order to tell it that we're using that, we type the words using namespace std. std stands for standard. All right, so now we can use our output stream. Okay, we need both of these things or it's not going to work. So the way we use an output file or an output stream is we type C out, right? This stands for uh, C out. And then you type two left angle braces. And then you need to type some quotation marks, okay? Quotation marks are how you, how you do words, right? How you, you type sentences. They're called strings. So inside this, we type pretty much whatever we want to go to the screen, okay? So we're going to type hello world. So this will go to the screen and say hello world, and it'll be awesome. Let's put an exclamation point. Then what we need to do is do another set of angle braces and then an end L. This ends the line. If you don't have this, it's not going to look right. It just makes a, uh, a line terminator appear on the end, and it just makes it look much better. Now. What's great about C out is we can basically chain together as many things as we want. Hello again, right? We can just keep going and keep going, and you just keep chaining these things together. It's very, very simple. It looks kind of weird, but it, it's kind of intuitive in a way whenever you want to have a bunch of different expressions together. This isn't the only way to output. We're going to learn other ways to do it. But for now, we'll just use this for our Hello World program. So let's get rid of all of this. And now at the end of every line of code that you write, like notice up here I had a semicolon, we need another semicolon here. The only things that don't need semicolons are these uh, include statements, right? Anything with a pound in front of it. And then functions like this, function headers, do not need a semicolon. But whenever you're writing code like this, you do need to put a semicolon. So when in doubt, go ahead and slap one on there. If it doesn't need to be there, you'll get an error. So this should work now, right? Let's go ahead and hit play. And it's just going to end immediately, right? In Visual Studio, it just likes to quit on you really fast. And we can stop that. You shouldn't have to do this in um, uh, code blocks. But in Visual Studio, you just type system, and then parentheses, and then in quotation marks, you type pause in all caps, and then another semicolon. And that will pause it. And then one more thing, just for completeness. At the end, we type return 0. Now, this return 0 is sort of optional in the main function, but it's just good to do for good practice. Anytime you have a function, you always want to have a return zero at the end. This basically just indicates, hey, everything went okay. The program worked correctly. If something went wrong, something went wrong up here, we would type return one or something like that, something different. But whenever it's return zero, it means everything is awesome. The program ran good job. And then that will always 
this return statement will always quit the program. If we type return 0 here, then we won't get any output because it's going to quit too early. Don't really worry too much about this system pause. It's just a little trick that will, you know, pause it and, and keep it from running. So let's get let's hit play and see if it works. It should work. There we go. We get hello world and then we get press any key to continue. If we press any key, it will quit. You can also there's there's also a stop button up here you can click if if you want to quit it that way. Now if we don't have this end L, I'll show you what happens. We get Oh, I have the insert key pressed. There we go. We get the system pause print statement pushed up against our hello world. That's why you need the end line, right? It just it ends your line for you. You can even do multiple end lines together. You can type end L and then end L again if you want to. And if we hit play, that will give us two, uh, an empty line, right? A whole empty space. Now, if you don't want to type out this long end L thing, there's another trick. There's another way to do this. If you want a new line, you just take you type backslash in. This means the exact same thing as this right here. They are the exact same thing. And we can do two of these, right? We can do slash in, slash in, and then we should get the same exact thing we did before. We'll get uh, two new lines, right? So this has been your first tutorial. Uh, by now, you don't really know what this means, right? You don't know what a function is. Um, you don't know exactly what uh, this all is doing, but that will all come in time. All that matters right now is that you know how to put stuff on the screen. So we're going to work off of this, and we're going to work towards our first little game. And join me in the next episode. We're going to learn about variables. See you later, guys.